I'm passionate about inspiring stories. Stories about people who make their dreams come true, no matter how many obstacles or adversities they face in life. Today, I'm about to meet an extraordinary young woman who's done just that and broken out the cycle of poverty. By 1979, the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia killed nearly two million of its brightest minds. The genocide was deliberate to eliminate academics, doctors and lawyers, pushing the country back into the dark ages. Without a strong educational base, it's been hard for the country to rebuild itself quickly enough to enter the modern world. This is a story of a young Cambodian girl who escaped the fate of her sisters who worked in Thailand's notorious tourist industry. A tale of how she used education to go from foraging for food each night to being in London here today and eventually find the job that she dreamed of back in Cambodia. Welcome, Chiang Thai. Thank you. How does it feel to be here? It was very amazing for me. It's like a, a heroin because um, like in my country, it's very poor and we don't have everything like here. So that's why it's like here is everything. It's like a heroin for me and amazing. Tell me how you grew up um, in Cambodia. Tell me about your childhood. Um, I have a sister. And when I was young, uh, every night I go to I go to the rice field with my father to cut the fish, and sometimes frog or and at the day I go to the forest to find the vegetable for it. So you were earning money. Yeah. How difficult was it for you to study and yeah. find food and sell food? They don't have ability to support me, so that I uh, we we grow some plant in the house and sell to other to get some money to sell to other people. It's hard. Yeah. Why was it so hard? Because uh, it's like a simple part for the people who live there. It, the the same situation as my family, so that everyone they they do the same thing. Yeah, they they grow the rice, they cut the free in the rice field, go to the river to find free or go to the forest to find animal for eat or vegetable. Yes. Just to eat? Yes. With five children, that was difficult for your family. It's a big family to support. Yes. How did you find time to go to school? When I was six years old, I go to school, but I don't have an easy car to go to school. I walk to go to school maybe uh, two kilometers from my house to school. And after I finish uh, primary school, I need to go to uh, secondary school. So then um, my, my mother decided to buy a old bike for me to go to school. Yes. And it quite far. Um, uh, eight kilometers from my house to school. And the road is it's not good. And you did this every day? Yeah. But there was a pressure in your family, wasn't there? Because at 13, your parents took you to Thailand. My family wanted me to drop out of school, to go to Thailand with my sister, to find a job, to get some money. And after that, I, I, I said to them, I refused them about it. They, they want me to get, to give up school. So the plan for you was like everybody else. Yes. Go to Thailand at 13 with your family or sister and start working yeah. and start earning money. Why didn't you do that? Because I think that um, it is not good that I drop out of school. And I, 
I know that uh, education is very important, especially I, I will have a bright light in the future if I get education. Because I don't want to be like my mother, my parents, that they are farmer, they didn't get education, so that they don't know how to do business, they don't know how to find the something to support the family, so that they just grow the plan or right. But I think that if I don't change it, my future is not. I cannot be like other people that I saw everyone like uh, when I was young, I want to be a, a pilot. That's why I, I think that if I get education, I will be a pilot. When did you have that dream when you were young, when you first thought, I want to be a pilot? How old were you? Mm, maybe I am seven years old because I saw the, the airplane and during that, it's like a, the airplane is very amazing for us because we really to saw the, to see the airplane. And when I saw, because I want to, uh, to see the, the, the real airplane is not on the sky. So that I think that if I, I, I am a pilot. Uh, I will cut the airplane, and I will know the how big of airplane. Yes. So you were seven years old. You saw a plane, and it yeah. captured your imagination. Yeah. And you wanted more. What gave you the ter determination to continue and fight for your education? Uh, I saw that everyone that they are drop out. They go to Thailand and after that, when they are come back, they didn't have a job. And I, I said that if I drop out, I will be, have a, a future like them. So I will be unemployment. We don't have the job. I don't have something to eat. I don't have something to support my family. Yes. So that's why I want to continue studying and um, then education is very important to to be a good future. That's why I I think that I won't stop studying. I will continue until I feel tired, until I feel that it's enough for me. And you're the first person in your family to break out of the cycle yes. of poverty? Yes. How does that feel? I feel so proud of myself and I feel so excited and sometimes I'm crying because I feel so excited, so proud of myself that I can do it. What kept you going in the dark moments? I, I hope that I will have a good future. So that's why I, I try and try. I never give up and I, I said to myself that I always encourage, um, motivate myself that I need to be strong, I need to continue even if I need a lot of uh, difficult things that I need to, to face with it and I need to stand with that situation. You have a certain strength, where does that come from? It's from <laughs> inside that I think it's from my heart. Now you begged and begged your parents to let you continue studying after the ticket to Thailand. And you promised them that you would find a way to make the money. Yeah, I, I promised them that I will make the money and to support them. When I finished studying and then I have a job. How did you find your way? How did you make that happen inside you? to keep the willpower? It's from my thinking that I, I think that I need to be strong. I need to continue, don't give up. I think that's incredibly inspiring, that you never gave up hope in the hardest time. Yes. Once the children of the Mekong came into your life, yeah. changed everything. Everything is easier. And you're here in London. What are you doing in, the, in London, Verity? Um, with the charity, I, I do the volunteer 
in the charity shop and also I I have a um, English class uh, for one month but now I finished it and now I do a job starting in a uh, credit agricole bank and it's very brilliant for me it's like everything is amazing and it's like uh, I am in a dream and dreams do come true yes of course and your family you must be so proud. Yeah, they are very proud and they are very excited that I, I am here. So out of five sisters, one sister so far yes. has broken the cycle of poverty. Yes. What would your advice be to all the other people that are watching this, to your younger sister? Yeah, I, I have a... Uh, a few words that you need to be strong, read your goal and don't give up. What's your plan for the future? You're studying banking and finance. Yes. I want to, to be a businesswoman. You will be an extraordinary businesswoman. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see you shining Thank a lot. You came from nothing, the children of the Mekong Charities helped you. Yeah. How are you helping other people? Um, I have a plan that when I go back to Cambodia, I will encourage them to be, to be, get more power. It's especially that you have a power inside your body, that you can reach your goal and don't give up. I have a plan that I will work in the third end of the Mekong for one year or two years to have them back. And what I get. It's not enough that I I work in here but it's that it's like the it's from my heart that I can have them. Only a little bit that I can have them. I'm sure you will. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Tai. Thank you. You can follow the children of the Mekong and sponsor a child yourself here. For more inspiring stories, subscribe below and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Leave a comment about the type of inspiring interviews you'd like to watch.